This video is sponsored by The Rich Wallet. More on that later in the video. Today I'm going to show you how to make a 100% whole grain spelt loaf pan bread. It's both healthy and delicious. Hi, I'm Sune and I'm a food geek. Today I'm going to show you how to make a 100% whole grain spelt pan loaf. So what is spelt? Well, spelt is an ancient cereal grain related to rye, barley, and wheat. It's native to southern Europe, but has been grown all over Europe. It was very popular up to about the 19th century, where it declined in popularity and was replaced by more modern versions of wheat. Over the last 20 years, it's become more popular again, with other ancient grains like einkorn and corsan, which are also ancient strands of wheat. So is spelt more healthy than regular wheat? <laughs> no, not really. All grains are considered healthy if eaten as mainly whole grain, and spelt has a very similar profile to wheat. It's high in carbohydrates and fiber, and also has a relatively high amount of gluten which means that it's not something you should eat if you have a gluten sensitivity or allergy to wheat. That being said, once properly fermented, people with IBS can eat moderate amounts of spelt bread because the so-called food maps are broken down during fermentation. But please don't take my word for it. Consult your doctor before adding anything to your diet that might be harmful to your health. So for the last 10 years, I haven't been using a regular wallet. I use cards for everything. Even my driver's license and social security card are in credit card form. And I've been looking for the perfect wallet for cards, and now i found it. The Rich Wallet is not only gorgeous, but also super practical. You can fit up to 12 cards, and there's a clip on the back if you need to keep some cash. It's light and super sturdy, and the Rich team is so confident that you'll like it then they let you test drive it for 45 days. You can send it back for a full refund if you don't love it. If you're interested, check out the link in the description and use the coupon code FOODGEEK at checkout for a 10% discount. Thank you to The Rich Wallet for sponsoring this video. So for this recipe, the only flour added is whole grain spelt flour. I use the coarse kind. The salt content is 2%, which brings out the delicious nutty flavors of the spelt flour. The hydration of this bread is 75%, which is as high as I would go with spelt, since it has a tendency to become super sticky at higher hydration levels. If you were to use a sifted spelt flour, I would go even lower, 70% maximum. But then you'd also mitigate the health benefits. The inoculation is 13.3%, which is lower than the usual 20%. This is to promote a longer fermentation, which helps break down the food maps more. And if this is not a concern for you, you can absolutely use a higher inoculation to make a, for a faster fermentation. For this recipe, I'm trying something new. Instead of aiming for a particular weight, I'm using easy to remember numbers instead. Let me know in the comments if you prefer this format over my regular way. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider becoming a member at Patreon. You can also buy some merch or use the links in the description for tools and ingredients. Those were the words. This is the recipe. There's a link for the written recipe in the description. To a medium bowl, add 750 grams of whole grain coarse spelt flour, 15 grams of salt. Mix them together with your hands. Then add 100 grams of sourdough starter, fed and grown to its peak. If low food map is important to you, you should use a spelt starter, otherwise any kind will be fine. 550 grams of room temperature water. Mix the dough together with your hands. Cover and leave to rest for an hour to develop the gluten. When the hour is up, do a set of stretch and folds. Then 
Then let the dough rest for 30 minutes. Do the second set of stretch and folds. Rest the dough for 30 minutes. Do the last set of stretch and folds. Then put the dough in a see-through container with straight sides. I use these really nice ones from Cambro. Then level the top of the dough. And then leave the dough to rise 50 to 100%. If you don't want to crack on the top, you should go for 100%. When the dough is grown, remove it from the container and let it fall out onto the kitchen counter. Prepare a dish towel with some whole grain spelt flour on top. Then shape the dough into a ball using your bench scraper or you can even use your hands. Leave it to rest on the kitchen counter for 20 minutes. Then grab your pan. I'm using a medium Pullman. Spray it with some baking spray. Flip the dough over and tease it out into a square. Fold up the bottom to about the middle. Then fold each side in over each other. Then roll the dough from the top. It doesn't have to be super tight. Grab the dough and flip it over with your hands. Roll it in the flour. Then flip it over again and add it to the pan. Then add the lid or cover it in some other way and let the dough final proof. It should pass the poke test, which means that if you poke the dough with a wet finger, the hole should fill in slowly and leave a small indentation. When you start to see signs of the dough being ready, heat your oven to 230 degrees Celsius, 450 degrees Fahrenheit, the pan at the bottom you can use for steaming. I use convection for this. When the dough is ready to bake, boil a kettle of water. Add the dough to the oven. Pour the kettle of water into the pan and turn the oven down to 210 degrees Celsius, 425 degrees Fahrenheit. Bake for 20 minutes. Then remove the steaming pan and bake for another 25 to 30 minutes. Remove the bread from the pan and bake for another 5 minutes to give the side some color. Remove the bread from the oven and let it cool on a wire rack until the center is room temperature. It takes at least a couple of hours. The bread itself is really delicious and can be eaten with any toppings that you love. I like to just use butter, ham and cheese, or a good Danish liver pate with pickled beetroot. Let me share a few pictures of this bread with you.
Doesn't that just look good? Perfect for a sandwich. But remember, anything you eat can be good or bad for your health. It's all about how much you eat and the variety. So while bread is delicious and should be part of your diet, you need lots of vegetables and protein sources for your body to function properly. Meat is not required to sustain your life, but if you eat a meat-free diet, you need to be more aware of where you get your daily proteins. I don't usually touch on health issues in my videos, but this bread is a delicious way that you can get your whole grain. Please like, comment and subscribe, it really helps the channel. I hope you learned something today. See you next time.